Hi everybody, I hope you are all well. Once again, here in the south of England, it's a bit of a gloomy day. It was absolutely glorious yesterday morning and then rain came in and it just didn't stop. So it was like, oh, and we've woken up to it again. It's very weird. August is feeling autumnal. It's very odd. Um, but you know, I, I don't like really hot weather, so I'm okay with that. Um, I've woken up today in a bit of an I can't be bothered mood, meaning I can't be bothered to blow dry my hair so it looks flat and wet and crazy, but pff, I just can't be bothered. <laughs> it's been a really, really funny week. My schedule's kind of been uh, scattered about because of longer hours at work and I've been trying to re-binge uh, One Tree Hill which has then affected my reading pattern so I pretty much spent all day yesterday reading the book um, I've been reading Sweet Cherry. But first, before we get into that, um, Taylor Swift, thank you for sending me into like a a head spiral over the <laughs> cryptic clues for, for the um, re-release of Red. Um, that, that was that was mental. That was utterly mental on Friday. And I, uh, not Friday, sorry, Thursday. And I was in a three hour workshop meeting when it happened. And my phone kept on going off. And I'm like, I can't get to it. I can't get to it. I'm in the meeting. Absolutely crazy. Um, what else happened? Yeah, on the same day, or possibly the Friday, I can't remember which one, we got the new teaser for Stranger Things series four, which had me freaking out um i am so excited for that i know we're not going to get it until 2022 um but i really 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 want a trailer but if they, you know if i have to wait until like halloween which i think most likely is when they're going to release it so be it i can't do anything about it there we go and then um, on thursday i got something in the post that i'm very excited about very excited about i'm gonna say it my absolute favourite, favourite book cover of this year <sighs> is The Evening and the Morning by Ken Follett. I have been waiting, waiting for so long for this book because this is, in case you don't know, this is the prequel to The Pillars of the Earth. I love The Pillars of the Earth trilogy. Love it. So the fact that Ken Follett was doing a prequel set in viking times when the the area that the the pillars of the earth is is set is established i was like oh my god oh my god oh my god freaking out fuck yes i am there for it and, but of course because of me because it's me all of my pillars of the earth trilogy are in paperback so i have to wait for the prequels to come out in paperback so it will match my bookcase that is what i'm like i am that funny about things and it got released on Thursday and it arrived at me on Thursday and I was screaming when this came through and oh my god look at that cover obviously the lighting because it's gloomy I've had to put the main lights on see, but this is like ruby red that is oh my god it's gorgeous and to be honest when I first saw the cover in the hardback I was not happy because the hardback was weird. The hardback is this exact same colour, but in like this teal colour. And there was this like random splash here of copper. And I was like, what is that? With Vikings, when you think about Vikings, I, or at least I do, um, it's passion. It's this, this fire. And of course, bloodshed, because it was very bloody time when vikings you know came to england and such but without vikings there's a there's a lot of things that we wouldn't have um to this day so you know <laughs> kind of have to thank them for for what for what they what they did um you know but i was just like so when i saw this i was like because i wanted it to be read i desperately wanted the book cover to be read and when i saw that teal i was like oh Okay, right, but then this came through my door, 
And oh my god, it is beautiful. It is beautiful. I love it. I love it. I love it. So this is going to be going into the my you know bookcase of the books that I bought that I've already announced for this year. And um, yeah, we'll see how you know I feel when I do my next picks of what I'm going to read. And this might be in the next load. I don't know. I'm so excited. I'm so excited. Um, but yeah, okay. Oh, so first five minutes dedicated to all that. Let's turn the attention back to what this um, video is about. And that is the book I've been reading this week, but mostly yesterday. And that is Hamnet by Maggie O'Farrell. Now, in case you are not aware, this is a fictionalised telling of the life of William Shakespeare's son. Sorry, a massive plane going over my house. I've got the window wide open, so sorry if you caught that. Um, so yeah, William Shakespeare's son, Hamlet. Now, Hamlet and Hamnet are the same name. It's there's there's always issues of records going back to this time with spelling mistakes and and all that lot. But we know. Uh, but uh, the thing was is that the literacy of people was very different compared to now. Um, and some people have, have put down um, his son's death um, entry, uh, not death certificate because we don't know because they, well, they didn't they didn't exist then. Um, but his entry of, of burial is written as Hamnet. So it is debated if it was a spelling mistake or if it was a case that there was these two different right um, ways of spelling the same name. Um, there, there are many cases where there are names like Rebecca. There, there are so many different ways to spell Rebecca. And people always ask me, you know, um, how do you spell my name? And I'm like, the traditional way, <laughs> because it's, you know, is that's that's the way you spell it. Now, um, so, yes, yeah, so William Shakespeare's son, Hamlet, died when he was young. Uh, he was uh, a twin because there was the oldest sister, Susan, and he um, was twin to Judith. So, yeah, so they had three kids and this book follows him. But it doesn't. So I went into this. I am a William Shakespeare fan. I see, look, I've got one of my William Shakespeare shirts on today. And I went into this very open-minded. I didn't know what to expect. Um, or anything, you know, we'll just see how it goes. Um, so because this is around his death, it's set in 1596, which is when he died. We don't know why he died. Um, all we know is his age. And we've got, there's a death, um, a burial uh, entry uh, to him. That's really it. We don't know anything about him. So it was a blank canvas for Maggie O'Farrell to play with, which made me think of Girl with a Pearl Earring by Tracy Chevalier. Uh, we, we know with Girl with the, the Pearl Earring, we know it was painted by Vermeer, we know what year it was, but we don't know anything about the sitter. And so she took that and let her imagination run wild. And it was a great success. And I really, I liked reading that book. Um, and my review of it is here on this channel. So it was like, okay, Maggie's having a go. And she won the Woman's Prize of Fiction for it, as noted here. So because of that, and because of the way the buzz about it, I was like, you know what, I'm going to give this a go. Uh, I'm going to take this as complete blank canvas not going to put any expectations out and see what happens and I am so disappointed by this book so as I said um you're following you're following Hamnet and his life and such with his sisters in this this summer in which he passed away so it's about him but it's not actually about him but it's about Will Shakespeare but it's not actually about Will Shakespeare but it's about, you know, family, but it's not about family. But it's about the play, but it's not about the play. It's like, what the fuck is this book? I'm sorry. I'm so confused by this book. Because the, the main character is actually Hamnet's um, mother, who in real life, you have to kind of read the author's note first, which is at the back of the book. Just FYI, which is really 
weird that you shouldn't have to do this, but I had to do this. So because <laughs> she gets referred to as Agnes and I was like, uh, I'm sorry, her name was Anne. It's Anne Hathaway. We know it was Anne. And she explains that the reason why she changed the name was because in her father's will, she'd referred to as Agnes. So Anne could have actually potentially have been a nickname or Agnes could have been a nickname. But either way, she's like, well, if that's what her father's called her in official document, I'm going to call her that. So she changed the name. There are also other family relations, uh, uh, family connections and names that have been changed because she realised that she would have multiple characters with the same name. So she wanted to avoid confusion for the reader. Fair enough. But yeah, as somebody who who who's read quite a few books about William Shakespeare and loves William Shakespeare, I'm like, uh, that's not her name. What are you doing? Uh, so I was a bit like, okay, right, read the back of the book. Read the read the author's note in the back of the book first. I'm telling you that. Um, but you shouldn't have to do that. Sorry, Maggie, shouldn't have to do that. Now, there is another thing. There is well, one thing in particular that really grates me. It's a personal thing. I don't know if other people have have the same issue as me but given that a lot of books are not written this way I would say in general it's just something that you should avoid I cannot stand third person present tense so the boy is running for example I prefer third person past tense the boy ran with you if you do third person present tense to me it's it's like a screenplay and i have this instant disconnection it really irks me what added to that what really really irks me is when an author decides that in the past we're going to be using third person past tense and in the present we're going to use third person present tense oh my god she did this constantly through the book so i felt more comfortable in the past sections because it was a third person past tense and she was doing this beautiful fluidity with her wording and stuff structure in that in those those past chapters but in the present ones oh my god hamlet just to say that he's our key character and the book is named after him, he spends 100 pages running around, literally running around Stratford trying to find his family, who he manages to run past in the street but doesn't re recognise, you know, doesn't realise they're there. Even though I love Stratford-upon-Avon, it is, it's an absolutely gorgeous place and I know the layout of roads and that would have been different back then, but still... The roads aren't so wide and so crammed that you can't see a family member across the road. You know, it's like, be realistic here. Come on. Um, so, yeah, he spends 100 pages running around, can't find anyone, goes home. Someone finally turns up and then he drops dead. That's it. That is all we get of Hamlet. And it's like, why, why have you... Why have you made him and talk about him as being the focus on the back of your book, this this key entity, and do nothing with him? You you say it, it you know it's it says a novel inspired by the son of a famous playwright, a boy whose life has been all but forgotten, but whose name is given to one of the most celebrated plays ever written, like. If it was so inspired by him, why didn't you give him more of a life, a focus, a, so that when he does die, and that's not that's not being a spoiler, it tells you on the first sentence on the back of the book that he's gonna die within a day or two, you know, a matter of days. Um, so if he's so important. 
why did you make him into a footnote of the story? That is what I cannot get. Also, the fact that Agnes clearly is the key character. She she has this very interesting arc and, you know, learning all her backstory and such and going forward into the present and then the possible future. She's really quite complex and such. I really found her interesting to read about. But why didn't you... The women of this book are so interesting and complex and such. Why are they not even referred to on the cover as a key player, even on the blurb on the back? Why have you focused on a character who you gave nothing to? And I'm sorry, the whole, there's, there's a thing in it which just, why? Uh, and it's to do with supernatural stuff. Um, relating to Agnes and it's like she's doing that because witchcraft and stuff you know the connection to his other plays like Macbeth and that uh, and you know obviously the vision of the ghost and such in Hamlet and it's like now you're just doing it to go ha ha look how smart I'm being you're not being smart you're not. I'm sorry, Maggie, but you're not. Um, I just don't get why she wrote this book. And, you know, you know, oh, you know, it, I am having issues with this like I had with Wolf Hall. I couldn't stand that book. I read, I read, I didn't get very far into it because it was so boring. It was so dry. It was so slow and uh, people critics were going mental over it. and you know Hilary Mantel's had all of this accolade and all those great awards. good on her you know well done good on and well done Maggie for the award she got for this but I'm like I'm sat here and I'm like why there's so many books that are so much stronger than this that have never even got nominations for awards why why is this being so praised and I feel the same with this it's just I think it's because you know it's William Shakespeare that's it that's why it's gotten the focus um I'm sorry to say that but it's how I feel um I have read one book previously by Maggie about I think maybe four years ago or, or longer than that maybe five years or more um called The Disappearing Act of Esme Lennox and that was um I think that was about four or five books before this one and so I was like right okay I liked it that was third person present tense but it needed to be because of the the story um narrative if that makes sense if you've read the book um <laughs> if you hadn't you're like what the hell um if it's done for a particular reason and it pays off i'm okay with that like i was there's me lennox but for this this like how I, i'm differentiating between the past and the present oh i'm going to use different tenses how about you just like put the year at reference at the top of each chapter and just have it be consistent that's the way i would have gone with this book in, you know if it was me um but yeah i was like you know i'll give a another books a go you know see how it's going and because this was like like as i said like four or five books later i was really thinking right she's had time to really develop s styles you know and this and that and i was like right let's see how this goes and you can see progression I'm not going to deny it. You can see progression. Um, I really liked certain sequences. I liked, um, there's a sequence of the flea. Um, if you've read this book, you know which one I mean, which I thought was quite good. And as I said, the stuff in the past had this kind of poetic flow to it, which I really liked. Um, 
But the thing I can't forgive Agnes for the sorry Maggie for doing is what she does to Agnes in especially the end of the book. I was like, "What the hell is this?" And the right, the ending. You know, there's going to be a discussion between her and Will, William at the end of the book. There has to be. We don't get to witness that that conversation. I I don't mind that because obviously it's private. It's between a a, 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 a woman and her and her husband. So you know, private. Get that as a reader. I don't necessarily have to read that. But the way in which this situation gets rammed down her throat and she has to just deal with it and then and it just uh, ends boom Look, cut to black drop the mic boom and like what maggie what what you she deserved better than that ending i'm sorry she did she totally deserved better and i just can't get my head around some of the really okay i know it's historical i know men of that time were different compared to now in attitudes of what a woman does you know around uh, what her role is in the house get that but there's the the way in which will is put to at he's actually stupid at times but you know so when he's a teenager but he's a teenager i'll forgive him for that at times he can be loving at times you know he has his real down periods and possible adultery stuff going on and depression and all this lot i get that but there are times like where he really expresses love for her and then when the twins are born and it's touch and go what will happen if they'll survive you know and this law and he comes back and literally his face falls when he sees her in bed he's like oh you're in bed i'm sorry she nearly died your 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 children nearly died she's been up all night feeding them checking that they're still alive even though she's been told to rest because of this horrific um labor that she went through and you're disappointed that she's in bed fuck off i'm sorry like decide maggie if william shakespeare you're going to depict him as an idiot an asshole or a nice husband just i know you know complexities of people and marriages and all that lot but it was just a bit like make a decision of where you want this this person to sit because honestly you are the person who is telling this story this is your story you should be the guiding light on this character and you're just like going yeah yeah, yeah. i was just so frustrated with this book and still i do not understand why it has been written what was the actual point of this entire narrative it just oh it just annoyed me it really annoyed me but one thing i can't deny is that agnes she i understood agnes a lot and her her love for her children and her trying to understand the world and everything so i can't fault maggie for that but it's just like why was this even written i don't i don't know why i don't know why um yeah and as i said it's i think it's that it's like wolf hall where it just feels like it's what it's about that's got the attention not the quality of the writing sorry it's how i feel about this book and uh, funnily enough um 
Sarah, my younger friend, was um, uh, reading this at the same time as me. She finished it before me um, because, as I said, my schedule was all over the place and I've been really watching One Tree Hill and that's been taking up my evenings and all that lot. So, um, so I didn't really read it until yesterday and she sent me, she sent me and my sister a message going, and when she finished the book, like, I am really confused right now. And then I replied back going, I'm feeling the same yesterday because I was just, I'm, I am shocked by this and not in a good way. And to say that this is being made into a film because it's in the very, very early stages, literally like the writer and producers have been announced and that's it. Um, so it's not even gotten further than that. Um, well done for it to be picked up to be made into a film. Sam Mendes is one of the producers. So, you know, I'm seeing that it's going to be some pretty good quality stuff because his uh, not just the, the films that he directs, but also what he produces have been really good quality films. So, you know, I'm excited about that. Um, I hope that they are going to <laughs> restructure this. Um, I really hope that they are going to give Agnes a better ending than she got. And I really hope it's going to, in a way, have a tone like Girl with a Pearl Earring. A book and I, 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 the film of it, I mean. The book is far superior than this um but that tone that that the film has girl the pairing i love i think is a great really underrated film um so i'm hoping that hamlet's going to get that same kind of treatment but we'll just have to see um but yeah they have, that's my hopes for the film I'm not necessarily, unless the, the trailer like blows me away, I'm not necessarily going to like go out and watch it as soon as it comes out. But I would be interested to see how they interpreted this book. Um, it's, yeah. I, uh, I, I look at some of these reviews, I'm a bit, I'm a bit confused by them. Like one of them, we will be reading this in a hundred years. Will we? Um, a masterpiece, historical fiction at its finest. Oh, I've read better. Um, <laughs> I just, I know, I know each to their own, each to their own. But it's like, and I know that like obviously on the on the front and inside and on the back, they're only going to put positive reviews because that's the way um publishing and marketing works um but yeah one thing i find interesting on the author's notes is the final paragraph where uh, maggie says lastly it's not known why hamlet shakespeare died his burial is listed, but not his cause of death. The Black Death, or pestilence as it would have been known in the late 16th century, is not mentioned once by Shakespeare in any of his plays or poetry. I've always wondered about this absence and its possible significance. This novel is the result of my idle speculation. That is, that's not, that's not original. I really like that as going, right, well, why don't we expand on that? Why don't we look at the psychology from a parent's point of view about the Black Death, Pestilence, you know, whatever you want to call it, in the 16th century. I think that's a really interesting perspective. But she just didn't reach that. That's the, that's the problem. Like I said, it's about Hamlet. It's called Hamlet, but it's not about him. It's about William Shakespeare, but it's not about him. It's about family and all this stuff, but it's not about that. It's about Agnes and how she got where, you know, her, her her path in life and everything. But it's not about her. Then what the hell is this book actually about? That's my key problem. And one final irk to finish this off. I know it's been, it's been this has been a long review, so I'm not going to do a reading. But I'm I just it's a rant. Um, Maggie, 
right we know obviously william shakespeare um lived in the 16th century all these characters live in the 16th century when we go into the minds of every single character in this book they speak just it's just standard english don't mind that very happy with that why is william shakespeare his thoughts all written in 16th century text is in the spell uh, you know it, it, words then were spelt how they sounded so um you when you so that's when you look at like shakespeare's folios and you know all this kind of stuff it's not necessarily written in standard english so why is it every single character when whenever we we read their thoughts and such in this book is in perfect english but for william shakespeare it's in 16th century is it because he's a genius and therefore he gets his own different way of thinking what why why it's it's silly it's nonsensical um all of these little choices and like i said the using the different tenses and to differentiate between past and present when it's just not needed just stick a date at the top of the chapter and focusing on things with you know especially on the the title and the book when it's got nothing to do with that and the disappointing ending the weird structuring it just was a big no for me until and i still don't know why it was written so yeah turned into a bit of a rant a bit of a spoily rant but i needed to in order to explain why i had issues with this book but that was hamlet by maggie o'farrell um so my usual questions would i read this again no mm -mm. big no no um i've read it i'm not fussed about it again i don't know maybe if when the film comes out if i like the film i could always go back to the book to see you know compare how the writer of the film interpreted this book um but other than that no uh would i read any more of maggie's books i'm gonna say yes because I've had two book experiences with her now. One where I thought, you know, it's okay, it's not bad, um, but it was in the earlier stage of her writing. And now in later stage of her writing, it was a big no. But that could have been because of this particular narrative. I think it's fair to give her another go on a completely another book um, and just see how I feel about that. Um, that is being fair, I think. Um, would I recommend this to anyone? No. No, 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 no. Um, it's... The whole playing with supernatural stuff and Shakespeare and... <sighs> playing with something that I think she she just approached it in a completely wrong way i just i i wouldn't want to recommend this to anyone so there we go so those are my thoughts on hamlet by maggie o'farrell have you read this book i'd love to know what you think you leave me a comment in the comments box below or give me a thumbs up thumbs down entirely up to you dead side and i'll be back with my thoughts after reading my next book which i'm really quite excited about it's the golem and the genie by helen wecker um this uh, fantasy book that's set in uh new york in 1899 um and yeah i'm really quite excited for this it's making me beam just thinking about it so i must I, you know i think i'm really going to enjoy this this is like over 600 pages long so we'll see how much i can get through it in a week um but the but the text is quite big on the page so you know it might be quite easy for me to get through we'll just have to see um but yes yeah, so i'll be back with my thoughts on the golem and the genie by helen wecker as soon as i am done and of course i'm just going to be drooling over this book cover for just i'm so excited um but yes <laughs> all right guys i'll see you later bye